We will be live translating this talk from German into English, so stay tuned. Digitale Agenda und im Innenausschuss über das IT-Sicherheitsgesetz geredet und möchte euch heute von diesen beiden Erlebnissen erzählen. Ein großer Applaus für Linus. Give a warm hand to Linus Neumann. Hallo, ich freue mich, dass ihr es geschafft habt und euch eine halbe Stunde in diese brütende Hitze setzen wollt. Ich würde mich freuen, wenn ihr auch noch für den Talk danach bleibt, aber ich hoffe, dass ihr das auch dann überleben könnt, weil es ist, ich finde es fürchterlich heiß hier und deswegen bin ich wirklich über die... I'm happy you made it, despite the heat. Um, I also hope you'll stay for the next talk, but I'm very happy that so many people decided to brave the heat and sit in this talk. So, Political Solutions for Technical Problems is the title of the talk today. And this is about two expert uh, expertises that I wrote for the German government, one for the um, interior agenda and that was about um, IT security and what you can do about it. And the second one was for the um, in an Ausschuss basically telling them that what they're trying to do is not making sense. So to begin, if if I say I want to give political solutions or technical problems here, first we have to talk about what technical problems are. So what do we want to solve in here in the first place? We all know the cyber. This is one of the first Google image results, so I think everybody's seen this. Cyber is large and cyber has also made us pretty unhappy recently. And that is something we have to uh, fight against, or that we want to fight against. Because it would be advantages for our society um, if we saved ourselves this trouble. So I took a look at the Symantec Internet Threat Report 2015, and they report approximately 6,500 vulnerabilities in IT systems every year. and approximately two zero days per month on average. Zero day means that this vulnerability exists in production systems and it's only been only become known by attackers exploiting them. So that is something nobody knew about before. The attackers exploited this weakness and only after there was damage humanity was informed about the vulnerability in this software or system. Best candidate is the Adobe Flash Player. I really uh, ask myself how they, they can go away with this low number of vulnerabilities per day. And finally, I think the most disconcerting part, according to the semantic study, is that the top five zero days in 2015 usually took 59 days until before they were fixed. So users are vulnerable for about 295 days in the year 2015. And I think you can say with good reason, it would be nice to um, lower these numbers. So obviously you want to increase the first number because you want to discover all the vulnerabilities. Zero days that are being exploited in the wild should be lowered. And of course, the time to first fix should be reduced massively. 2014 was also the, uh, the year of politically and um, technologically very um, painful security bugs. So we, we had the go-to-fail from Apple that was one and a half years old before it was found. A vulnerability in the TLS library of iOS and macOS. So one and a half years that people were vulnerable was fixed on the same day for iOS and five days later for the Mac. And thus deserves the award for second most fastest pushed update that Apple ever released. Only the U2 album um, that people got for free a few, day, a few years ago reached people faster than that. We had Heartbleed, everybody knows about it. It was two years old when it was discovered. So theoretically we were vulnerable for two years. Had no or very few chances to see if any of these attacks have been happening before. Fix was released on the same day. 
the fix was published with knowledge of the exploit. Special feature, the first bug that had a logo before it became cool. I think that's worth a round of applause. And Shellshock uh, vulnerability in Bash, 25 years old before it was discovered. As far as I know, that is the oldest CVSS 10 that, they, that exists. It's older than the IP stack that Windows uses. So yeah, it's probably the the oldest the oldest bugs because uh, the Windows IP stack is also in the CVSS 10 area. So we have problems, and it turns out that the oft-proclaimed self-healing powers of open source are not working as much as we wish for. All of these symbols, as well, uh, Open SSL, as well as Apple's TLS implementation S. Uh, bash are all open source programs, and everybody sees yeah, open source much much more secure because everybody can look at it. And many bugs, uh, many eyeballs make bug shadows. But reality is different, and we can see that the open source quality assurance. I think we just have to admit it to ourselves. Um, there are still deficits there, and the economic incentives to make software more secure have also failed us, because some people decided to uh, exploit some some of the uh, some of the victims of heartbleed and correlated it with their yearly revenue and all of these would totally have had the money and power to audit open SSL or to pay someone to make the library more secure uh, in the meantime Facebook created their own TLS library but we can see we have yearly revenues that are definitely relevant here and all of these are being projected or uh, amongst others protected by open SSL, by open source products, but none of them audited them. And I think that's very sad. I think there's a social dilemma at play here, because if I invest in open source software, I have to spend money. At the same time, everybody profits from that, also those who don't invest. And of course, that leads to an incentive um, where OpenSSL is the industry standard. Everyone's in the same boat. That means nobody can uh, can blame me if I get a security issue there. And of course, why should I invest? Because my incentive is to just wait for everyone else to do it, and I could just profit from their effort. So let's go to the political solutions. So what I was talking about last, at the beginning of last year, about the digital agenda, agenda of the German uh, government, I think the the following political solutions would be appropriate uh, to to ensure that we all have a safe uh, safer computer systems, not us as citizens only, but also uh, companies which. Uh, Whose, whose rights the, the German government is also trying to protect in this, in this context. But where are the political influence uh, possibilities at all for, for these kind of technical problems? So we we have ma real real bugs, programming mistakes, uh, buffer, where just a, a code quality is is lacking, uh, something you can exploit on that level, and we also have the concept of a backdoor. Uh, uh, maybe not quite an unintentional mistake, but the, the, the remote access possibility, which ha might or might not have been built in by, by design, so that's a systemic uh, kind of a flank which you can can't target. Uh, take the German uh, secure mail program, de email. This was an example. Of but these aren't really uh, political errors per, per se. But I'd like to, so and that's why I'd int introduce another idea to... Well, an ex expanded model. This is, um, this is the different layer, uh, so... After this layer seven, the layer eight problem, we have the organizational level and the top level is the kind of politics. So this is a problem of, of competence really at this level. So at the same time, they're under pressure to do something at last. Um, 
And there's a lot of act, sort of action going on, saying uh, we have to do something now, finally. But it's a kind of security uh, drama that where the the efficiency of the of the approaches isn't isn't really uh, apparent. So we know uh, maybe we know airport security when we all have to leave our uh, toothpaste there. We think, oh yeah, they're they're taking care of security, but uh, it's it's another it's another approach or a workaround that uh, should be addressed as itself. And so on on the the layer below that, the organisational level. Um, we have well. We have another focus with what, regard, as regards um, company interests. So, what is what is their need to do to do IT security? Um, it, the users themselves are, are usually not decisive there in this, this kind of process or decision. So, we have we have a dysfunctional KPI. What's what's um, what's a KPI? Three-letter acronym. This is key progress indicator. It's a he's not sure himself. A key performance indicator. So this is what you we arrange with your with your consultant, with your McKinsey advisors, and uh, to be able to measure your own your own progress in the last year, for instance. So what they're saying is, of course, find more errors in, in shorter time. But these kind of personal, personal advancement reports uh, will make you ensure that people spend the, the least possible money in the, in the shortest time. So basically, is, it's a certification. Just uh, make sure that you keep, keep on going and can't be, uh, can't be sued for negligence or something. Um, so that means you, you know, you've already yeah, covered your ass, uh, done your job well enough. So if you take companies like Microsoft, that's, that gives us all another level to, to do something interesting within this uh, organization um, is quite difficult. And so that's my conclusion that the social dilemma that arises out of this is that no one is as good uh, as maybe they could be or some uh, because it's not worth investing in this mutual gain. And so the vulnerability level might be at the application level or at the presentation level or, you know. So these are indirect ways of of targeting exactly the the level where where the weakness is, where the vulnerability is, and um, these are kind of well open question. Will these will these uh, uh, signs make sure that the G German certificate for for security uh, Will will these make coders write better code, or will they prevent hackers from from hacking? Uh, this is something a, a friend of mine, who is who is an auditor of one of these. Well, he said if I if I if I sell a uh, bad bad meat if, uh, because I'm a vegetarian, I didn't catch that. Then. Uh, then I can be certified for, well, have his have his fish and chip shop certified by some strange rule breaking or bending. It, I didn't quite get to the anecdote. But regarding software quality, we have the infrastructure level. The question is, how does uh, the infrastructure need to be uh, built up that we can uh, enforce these? Standards and the the decentralization. Are the, these are all these are all points that are, that are only necessary as soon as as soon as the first level, the software quality has already has already failed you. So that can be advanced uh, from before, just to make independent audits, uh, to to make bounty prizes, and to also have a, li a liability for for bad code. But if you have Fraudulent systems. Well, you could talk about liability issues. 
and just see with what kind of bugs this is already delivered out. But um, so these political ideas that might uh, might be realized, we need some kind of well accountability to to ensure how these standards are 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 enforced at all. And again, in Germany, we have a situation that we're, uh, the data retention is being reintroduced. In this in this situation, I would have liked to have seen that uh, after a year, we can we can say, well, have we profited? Have we benefited from data retention? No, there's no there's no indicator for that. So then we have to leave it be and uh, carry on uh, another way. So instead of that, you see, um, I'm a consultant. I have these three boxes. Now I'm going to dive into the deep. Proactivity means you want to be faster than the attackers. And the entire security industry annoys me, in, especially with the products. The entire prevention thing is, is always trailing behind. Oh, there's a new vulnerability. Now we have to create a new patch. Oh, new virus. We have to update our signatures. And the entire area of prevention only thinks about known vulnerabilities and not about how to reduce the number of, uh, or increase the number of known vulnerabilities and how to be faster than the attacker. Wait, there's a slide missing here. Oh, maybe not. Then I wonder how can we increase software quality today, especially the open source software. And one thing. I think would be cool are so-called bug bounties. Bug bounties, from an economical perspective, are very sensible because you just put out one high award and you just say, OK, remote ex code execution in OpenSSL, if you find such a bug, we give you $250,000 or something. And then you just slowly increase um, the awards. And then you hope that sometime uh, several scientists are working on this, several researchers are working on this, and you don't actually have to pay them. So for security researchers, then maybe not the best, but economically speaking, for security, they're very interesting. The problem is that today's bug bounty programs just uh, don't don't award high enough uh, amounts. So we have this company called Vupen, um, and they just buy exploits. And so with the Google's bug bounty program, people go there, they can they can show them um, vulnerabilities, but they don't actually collect the price because that would um, force them to reveal their technique. And instead of, of cashing in the, the award, they just say, yeah, no, we're not going to show you how we did it. We just wanted to show you how that we can do it. Uh, we actually have another buyer who will pay more. And of course, that's the worst thing that can happen in these kinds of competitions. I think the only thing that we can do as a society is to take care that as a civil body and as a, a state body, we are in the position to pay them the prices that they want to, uh, they want to get for their work to dry out the black market that is also being peppered by the uh, state security agencies. Then, of course, it's a question of liability. Um, security promises are not being kept. And I always forget who said it, but there is this beautiful quote saying there's only two Uh, there's only two suppliers in our society that can work without any liability. That's drug dealers and software manufacturers. And both of them call their users users. So if they don't keep their promises or patches are coming too late, um, like these 59 days, uh, sorry, 95 days, I think at least in proprietary products and um, obvious carelessness, you could try to create a... Um, political pressure for liability, which would actually incentivize people and companies especially to make the software more secure. So 20 years of IT products or more, uh, more than one decade of 
um, security problems. We find several thousand vulnerabilities per year. Why? Manufacturers say we want to reduce costs, we want to maximize our profit. Users cannot see security features, they don't understand or check, that's why they go for the nice certificates. And in the end, security is often an afterthought. So people often ask you, uh, ask us, well, is this secure? And then you say, well, what's the attack you want to defend against? And that's something we need to educate people about. I think the only way to actually tackle this problem is to create more uh, legislation and actually create stronger, stronger marketplace rules. So, for example, standards should be uh, that we demand decentral infrastructure, we demand strong standards, uh, we demand end-to-end -end encryption. And, of course, you, you can just um, codify these demands, but you can only force people to follow these if you're competent enough. And if you don't make the mistake to um, give suppliers the, the choice to just um, create their own enforcement rules. And so the next step we should take a look at the Ministry of the Interior. Thomas de Maizière, the German Minister of the Interior, probably the last thing he wants in his life is that our IT systems become more secure. If you look at what he's um, well, what he's in control of, he's in control of police who basically want to push forward data retention. There is the um, Federal Office for the Pot uh, Constitution of the Protection, so the, the Internal Secret Service, who are mostly busy with spying on journalists and shredding old files and supporting Nazi structures. So the last thing they want is for IT to become more secure. Then there's the BND, the German um, external secret service, who recently offered four and a half thousand, sorry, four and a half million euros to buy zero days. So they definitely don't want us to know what they have so they can patch against what they paid so much money for. And then finally there's the Federal uh, Office for the Security of, of IT, who participate in developing Trojans for the government, and they should now be responsible for to eliminate the zero days that the colleagues from the BND bought earlier. Um, I don't buy that, and neither should you. So, what our demands as a CCC is to take the BSI um, out of that mantle. and then subsume all the, the, the other agencies under the Ministry of the Interior so they can finally do what the job actually is, and namely protect us from the people who attack us or who want to attack us. So that's about our suge suggestions so far. And now, well, what we were confronted with uh, in as a result. And I had a letter in my letterbox. What, what, was, what happened there? Well, that was exactly how I felt, a sort of blackout moment. Well, uh, laws are, in a way, they're published as a sort of a div file so you can you can amend one one paragraph here and there so maybe uh, they have learned something there in those terms from from our community but we have five areas here that are sort of the, the minimum standards uh, that are from from legal from legal side the, the least common denominator and so we have the points if the the BSE the the security um, office of the government is is involved with with working with uh, with government uh, with non-government companies, um, then there have to be certain regulations held and well a lot uh, a lower threshold to actually access data. There are kind of deals to what what information and what standards and 
these are enforced in these in these uh, one on one contracts and so we have the, the criminal police which is now becoming the the, the central uh, cyber police uh, cyber war monitoring unit and um, there was the discussion about IT products, uh, software basically being traded as arms or with similar regulations to to international trade. Well, this is uh, the thing about re registry. Uh, the, the the need to register your your product is um, is interesting here. So basically, it's this ministry defining what's what's critical infrastructure, and just keeping a, a list of the well lower standards. But of, of course, the providers or Enterprises um, have have the right to make suggestions. So how 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 on earth should the the German Office for IT Security know what what kind of demands uh, sec security standards <laughs> uh, companies might need? Well, but so what these companies need to do that want to have this certification, they have to go do a sort of two year audit cycle and have to um, alert give an alert if they have security issues but these that can be done anonymously and if the if the product is entirely um, deprecated then they have to have certain contact persons for for well it's like once the the, the first nuclear reactor is is hacked well we might find out through this uh, alarm obligation uh, form a bit later on so that's so uh, that's a uh, most immediate way and so we get every two uh, every two years we get a sort of delayed image of, of what's what's going on and so you can uh, you can imagine in this kind of in this kind of well how how fast the yearly cycle is in this in this context So let's let's have a look at the security standards that are are to become obligatory. Well, basically the companies have to write these security concepts themselves. Take as an example uh, energy, they have they have unions or representatives and lobby groups and they have a sort of suggestion right in the in the legal in legislation. Uh, and an expert reads reads the evaluation and says, uh, "Well, that sounds like a, a you can you you could do it in this in this manner." And I think the uh, in the BSE Security Office, IT Security Office, I don't think uh, there's so much known about uh, the the proceedings of legislation. So everyone is uh, just coming, convening, and taking their own stack of IT concepts, uh, security concepts with them, and these have very very different. Uh, standards, not only formatting, but but writing, and uh, what's uh, it's literally a matter of finding the least common denominator, and so that's uh, the the box at the back here, the the combination of both. They both they have two possibilities really, and so what I said to them is just one option is you you read all of them and the take take the best uh, take the best su suggestion. And all adapt to that, which means you won't have to actively change your already existing um, procedures. And the other option is that that we take the not the smallest common denominator, but to to in make it a, a broader broader concept, and make sure that it's just something that everyone can can achieve in within the next two years. So. Um, if you see what it might be a simple process, it's quite clear what what uh, people will choose, or which would be the box on the right, just the the least effort, the way of the least resistance. Then we have the telemedia services that have to be secure now. Telemedia services are content and hosting um, suppose, um, suppliers. And they're now forced to take organizatory and technical precautions to protect the systems, components, and processes, and also for, um, 
supposedly to create um, appropriate authentication methods, but that was removed from the um, change law. They may now save user data to try uh, debug and solve issues, which is uh, which which takes um, paragraph 15 of the telemedia law and makes it analog to the paragraph 100 of the uh, Telecommunications Act, um, which allows them to save user data. And there isn't even a set of limitations on this. That's the kind of data that's being used um, when you get subpoena sub for um, downloading files. Because obviously, if these data exist, then you can use a uh, civil law process to just subpoena them and use them for your purposes. So obviously this is counterproductive because the best way to get data security is to not uh, store data that you don't want to risk getting hacked. And that's the point. We we know the, the problem as soon as you have the data, everybody comes and wants to access it. Um, I've compared it to the European Union uh, guideline 2006-24 EG and basically this is a data retention law that is not limited to criminal law and then there is this beautiful part where the um, federal criminal police gets the jurisdiction over cyberspace where you can see how uh, how many and which laws are there that that uh, involve computer crim uh, computer crime that includes the um, unauthorized access and uh, of data and, and preparation of such computer fraud and manipulation of data and computer sabotage and of course you could say if you're writing pen testing tools or proof of concept for vulnerabilities then um, you have other people commit a crime and thus you're also liable that's the, the kind of gray area that we operate here in here in Germany and that's what we're trying to uh, get rid of as a CCC, because the IT security can only be achieved by reducing ID, IT insecurity, and for that we need research. So with all of these cases, first you go to your local police. Um, if you're especially especially wide, far-reaching cases, then you get passed on to the to the state level. And if they are of a um, countrywide or, or larger impact, then they get passed on to the federal criminal office. So you can't, that, uh, it's hard to imagine a way we can get any further away from democratic structures. So to summarize, our first criticism was the protection of the end user. The protection of end users is something that's not even in this entire new law. Um, companies know how to protect their own interests very well. They know exactly which data are important and which aren't um, in regards to their yearly revenue. And user data, especially telemedia suppliers or telecommunication suppliers, that is data that they don't really care about because last years have shown that if there is a breach there, um, maybe a larger problem where user data are stolen, there's zero consequences. Uh, customers don't leave. Customers can't demand any punitive damages. They, um, yeah. So there's just a few days of, of media coverage. Half a year later, uh, half a year later, you you create some security transparency offensive. Um, sell people your new messenger, saying it's now secure, and there's there's no damage to your image at all. So I think that's a joke, and we absolutely need concrete. Uh, ways to tackle end user protection. Secondly, bureaucracy. <coughs> in IT security, instead of bureaucracy, I wish for a proactive approach. <coughs> I want to. I want IT security to be created by a competition of competition, uh, a competition of corporations with each other, and against bureaucracy. Um, one way to not get that is the the right of. Um, giving the corporations the right to suggest their own um, procedures because obviously corporations will never out of their own volition um, 
suggest any things that they would have trouble fulfilling. So you would always end up with the absolutely smallest thing they can get away with that is not obviously ridiculous. So I'm looking forward um, to the corporations claiming to over exceed the um, standard of security just demanded by law. And then, of course, we have privacy. The fewer data is collected, the fewer data uh, will be hacked. And here we can see that the collection of data um, happens for completely different reasons. And lastly, we demand the um, independence of the Federal Security Office, Federal IT Security Office, which needs to become its its um, own agency. Because now they, they are the only ones who know anything about security. And currently, the, the secret services and the criminal agencies are their colleagues. And of course, they will share that stuff. So that is why I don't think it's a good idea to supply the BSI with information about security vulnerabilities, because they will just leak it to the secret services who are potentially attackers. So in theory, good idea. But they should not be under the influence of the Ministry of the Interior. So that's it. Thank you.